this is the RPG Crawler, and welcome to another Indie Game Friday, where each week I take a look at a different independent role-playing game. This week, we're going to take a look at Monster's Den Godfall, the latest in the Monster's Den series. Developed and published by Monstrum, and the result of a successful Kickstarter, it was released on Steam on July 6, 2017, and is currently available for $14.99 US. The original Monster's Den was a Flash-based dungeon crawler, and this one takes that same formula and adds overworld travel, additional character customization, quest systems, and so forth. I'll admit that while I have played the original back in the day, I haven't really kept up with the series until this one. Even so, the lineage it derives from is still quite evident for those who have played prior incarnations. As far as the storyline goes, there's actually a pretty in-depth one, which is unusual for an otherwise simple dungeon crawl and loot grab. Basically, over time, the gods of a certain land fell, and when they did, their worshippers tended to die en masse. Now only one remains, leaving their followers the last remnants of human civilization. Surrounded by savage humanoids like orcs and goblins, necromancers reanimating the dead, heretics and other creatures from beneath the earth. The main character starts as a recently resurrected hero from a bygone age, and after a brief tutorial dungeon, you get the opportunity to customize your character's looks and banner. You don't have to worry about the individual ability scores of your main character, since the fighting is done exclusively through your mercenaries, of which you can have up to four in each group. Once you are out of the starting dungeon, you are given command of four pre-built mercenaries, and then you can proceed to your first mission, after which you are given a base of operations. At that point, you've really had a taste of most of what the game has to offer, although there are a few additional subsystems you encounter along the way. Major sections of the game include above-ground exploration, dungeon crawling exploration, combat, and management. Above-ground exploration takes place between missions and crawls, and basically involves moving around a particular party over the overworld map. As they travel, they can uncover additional places, some of which are temporary encounters that can be engaged with or skipped entirely. Entering some encounters or settlements brings up a menu, where a character can seek local quests, local shops, and sometimes have special events. Each settlement is part of a faction, and the player can gain influence with each faction individually. This can result in different upgrades and items becoming available to the character over time. The main character's stronghold can be upgraded using influence and gold, allowing for different features and bonuses to be accrued over time. For example, building the Quartermaster will open the option to purchase additional items. In a settlement, you may also select different quests. You can have up to three at a time at first, and each month more quests are cycled in. Different quests may be considered main quests or side quests, although the main quests can generally be automatically given to you, rather than requiring you to return to town. The side quests are divided into different difficulty tiers based on level, so you can generally try to find ones that are in your level range. Most quests require you to journey to a dungeon and enter it, and this is where the real meat of the game is. Once you've entered a dungeon, you're presented with a representation of the room that you're in, as well as the ones that are adjacent. As you move from room to room by clicking on them, more adjacent rooms are uncovered, and you may encounter various items and objects, or creatures. Fortunately, creatures are clearly indicated on the map, and you can actually mouse over them just to find out what creatures the particular group contains. This will allow you to pick and choose your battles as you progress through the dungeon. With a little caution, some of the dungeons can be quite easy as a result, although I certainly found individual battles to be relatively challenging with a new party. Each party can contain up to four characters of various classes, with the occasional guest characters thrown in. They can be arranged on a 2x3 grid. The monsters are likewise arrayed, but there may be up to six of them. Positioning along the grid can determine which attacks can hit who. For example, having someone in the front row precludes melee attacks from going directly to the back row, allowing for the setup of a standard tanking style. 
During combat, initiative timers tick down until a particular character or monster's timer is full, at which point it's their turn. There's an initiative tracker that can help you tell whose turn is next, allowing for some strategy and timing. Characters which are wounded or expend their energies retain their losses after combat, and may be restored either through healing shrines, healing supplies, or by utilizing specific skills outside of combat. After combat, each character gets experience. Characters who died or spent the entire combat dead still gain experience, although less than those who survived. Dead characters may be revived at a healing shrine or after a total party wipe. Total party wipes do cost influence, which means that there's some penalty to them, although you don't get completely eliminated. After combat, there's also the potential for loot which is really one of the major components of the explore, hack, and loot formula that makes up so much of this game. Loot is randomized and includes tacking different qualities onto existing items based on various rarities. The rarer something is, the more chance for higher-end abilities. Loot that isn't being used can be sold at any given time in the dungeon, and some loot has no purpose other than selling for coins, such as the various forms of treasure. It's actually really convenient to not have to rush back to town to sell the trash loot every single time, and can save on inventory space. Another interesting facet is that there's a variety of essences and improvements that you can tack onto your certain gear, allowing for even items found in the dungeon to be customized to your preferences. Leveling up characters allows for the distribution of an ability point in one of the main ability scores, as well as two points into the various talent trees. Each character has two talent trees based on their class, and each talent tree ends in a specialization, which can increase the abilities of the talents in that tree, but then disallows further advancement in the other tree. It all makes for a fairly complex and thorough dungeon crawler, although the nature of such means that it's highly repetitive until the end game, when your character's various skills and gear starts to stabilize. So that can be a downside to certain players, but if you're into the sort of hack-and-slash loot finders that this game represents, then you're likely already used to it. Graphically, Monster's Den Godfall is a definite improvement over its predecessors, with various still-frame sprites and a nice 2D dungeon style. The music is well done and atmospheric as well. The otherwise limited sound effects, however, could become repetitive over time, especially with the already cyclical gameplay. So is this game worthwhile? Well, it has its downsides. There's some bugs, serious bugs in fact. The game felt pretty unfinished on release. The developer is working very fast and very hard to come up with fixes, but there's definitely a way for it to go for something that could be considered a full release. Furthermore, the hack and slash gameplay, while very typical of the genre, may be too repetitive for some people. However, if you do enjoy the genre, then you might enjoy that sort of thing as a selling point. One last issue is that balance is sort of all over the place, both in difficulty and in builds. Certain classes just seem objectively better overall than others in just about every role. And this is indeed something that should be addressed. So this review has been based on build 1.04. If this game was more complete, I'd have no doubt that I'd be able to recommend it immediately. Honestly, I have no doubt that it will get complete, especially at the rate that the developer is fixing things and tweaking things. Even as it is, I'm finding it a lot of fun, and definitely worthwhile for fans of the series. That having been said, unless you're a die-hard hack-and-slash fan, then you're probably going to be able to wait until more patches come out, or there's some sort of sale. It's not really a matter of the game having potential and needing to reach it, but rather that the game already is pretty solid, it just needs a lot more polish and balancing. And on that note, I'll call it here. The link's in the description below as always. This has been the RPG Crawler with Indie Game Friday Monster's Den Godfall. If you like what you've seen, remember to leave a like, comment if you've got feedback, and subscribe for more RPG content, both tabletop and computer. If you'd like to help me out with this channel, please check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash rpgcrawler. Until next time, take care and goodbye.